hello everyone, uh, welcome back, right? So we are talking about, I believe, uh, acids and bases, and thus in this context we have discussed kinetics, and we have talked little to no, no aspects uh, or covered little to no aspects with respect to kinetics. Why is that? Because in acids and bases or in those systems, I guess, the kinetics is so fast that in general you will almost always end up uh, achieving equilibrium by the time you analyze the uh, system now, right? So, we did away with kinetics and we started analyzing equilibrium or looking at the various aspects with respect to equilibrium. So, equilibrium again, what does that give you an idea about? It is the state at which or the state achieved when the system has gone to the maximum extent or farthest extent possible under the given conditions of uh, temperature and pressure, right? So, in that context, we have moved forward, I believe we looked at the various examples or importance of acid base systems and pH basically why it is a master variable. So, think of air or oxygen right and it is the source of life now. So, similarly pH has its hand in each and every pi with respect to the environmental engineering systems. As we go further down and look at most of the applications you will see that I guess. And in that case we want to be able to relate let us say which acid is going to be present as the protonated form or deprotonated form and in what fractions right because you want to know can it be removed by ionization fractions or such and thus you want to look at is it charged or uncharged right can it re release a proton or can it actually act as an acid at that particular pH yes or no. So, to be able to cover these aspects or understand these aspects we looked at the Henderson Hasselbalch equation and what did that give us an idea about? It gave us an idea about pH in relation to pKa and the concentrations of the deprotonated form A minus by the protonated form HA. So, that is the aspect there, right? And then we, I believe, we moved on to discuss ionization fractions in the last lecture class. So, we are done with more or less being able to understand the background with respect to the acids and bases. And one particular aspect that we come across is the acid dissociation constant Ka, right? And in this context, Ka or the pKa value, which is the negative logarithm of Ka, gives you an idea about the strength of the acid. So, what do I mean by that? Let us say pK of HCl I think 0 or less than 0. So, what does that mean? So, at almost all the pH values because pH 1, 2 HCl is going to dissociate into H plus and Cl minus or it can actually donate the proton or it will act as an acid. But for example, if I take acetic acid, acetic acid pKa is 4.76 I guess. So, at pK or at pH 3 the acetic acid cannot donate its proton or only some of it or a small fraction of it. So, thus we uh, call that a relatively I guess a weaker acid, right? All these terms are relative. So, how do you quantify that? You can look at that with respect to the pKa, right? So, now what we are going to discuss now I guess is, you know, you have multiple systems out there in nature, either in water, air and so on, let us say. So, for example, a particular concentration of a particular acid is introduced into the system what is my equilibrium going to be with respect to the change in pH or the change in species concentration, species as in the concentrations of those compounds or compounds present at equilibrium. So, this is where the crux of the uh, what do we say class lies, right? You want to be able to quantify the changes and what you would expect at equilibrium. So, in that case, uh, let us go on I guess. So, in now we are going to start looking at developing models, especially when you have multiple reactions, right? And in this context, we already discussed the models and I believe we talked about this model specifically the component balance, component balance. We introduced this concept of the building block called the component in terms of equilibrium, right? So, we are not going to go into that in detail again, but we are going to uh, have a problem solving session. So, throughout the class we are having some problem solving uh, sessions, so, but this time we are going to have it in tandem with the lecture session I guess, right? So, the component balance I guess, let us look at an example that I have here. So, looks like the example that I am going to or we are going to look at is, the first one is going to be a single acid. So, if you have or if you know that the concentration of your particular solution is such that after adding acetic acid, it is going to be at 10 power minus 3 molar, right? Acetic acid, let us say, right? I want to know what are the equilibrium concentrations, concentrations of the 
various species right so again uh, so this is a simple example we are going to start with right uh, now assume a case or look at a case where you have where you added acid or histic acid in this particular case ch3coh which we are uh, for which we are using the nomenclature hac right so you added hac such that the concentration of the acid in that particular system is 10 power minus 3 molar so i let's say we are going to start with the baby steps so first i want to be able to calculate the ph for the single acid based system and then I will also want to calculate the relative concentrations not relative pardon me the relevant concentrations of the various species species as in those compounds that would be in equilibrium in that particular solution. So let us uh, go ahead and first identify the species though. So what are the species that I have let us see right and in this case we are assuming that there is only HAC and then that is added to water right. So as we know with from our background right any acid right you have an acid that is put into solution it can be st it can stay as its protonated form or the deprotonated form. So in this case what do we have we have acetic acid CH3COOH or HAC and it can deprotonate it and form acetate ion or AC minus. So that is what we have here so we have H plus and AC minus so obviously the species what can they be they can be the protonated form of the acid the deprotonated form of the acid and you will always have H plus and obviously if you have H plus you will have OH minus right. So these are the species or the compounds that you would expect to have at your equilibrium right and so then what next now we need to identify the components and so again a brief refresher what are these components they are the building blocks right so think of your uh, games that you played in your childhood if any I guess right. So you have these building blocks let us say blue colored blocks, red colored blocks, yellow colored and you can choose uh, from individual blocks or color individually differently colored blocks and form different shapes right. But if I look at the total number of blocks of the blue, red and yellow they are still going to stay the same right. So these blocks or components are conservative right so that is what that is the concept you are going to use to be able to solve any and all equilibrium based questions. So again components how do you choose components I guess you are going to choose the H plus in general always if you want to you can choose other components too but choosing other components might require additional calculations so a good thumb rule to is always to use the proton or H plus and then to choose the most deprotonated form of the acid and in that case this is going to be AC minus right. So also I guess a care that needs to be taken with respect to choosing components is that you need to choose the minimum possible number right and also keep in mind that you cannot choose components which you can use to form a third component itself for example component 1 and 2 cannot be used to form 3 they need to be independent of each other right. So that is obviously the case here so once I am done with that components I guess we need to write the formation equations the formation equations as in I want to form my species which I am going to list here from my components and in general always component means there is always H2O it goes without hand or without saying that water is always a component right and again we do not list it as a species because water concentration in the dilute systems we assume that it does not change right. So that is the reason why we do not list water as a species and water is always considered a component though right. So here we are trying to form the uh, species here from the various components so let us see how we can form that and here we have H plus one component and AC minus required to form HAC. Keep in mind that these are not chemical reactions these are literally H plus plus AC minus going to HAC or equal to HAC and you only need 1 AC minus to form 1 AC minus 1 H plus to form 1 H plus and H2O minus H plus to be able to form your OH minus. So once you are uh, an expert let us say or not even an expert once you are comfortable with your uh, component balance equations and such you can I guess uh, if you want to skip the formation uh, reactions or equations pardon me not the reactions formation equations and directly move on to the tableau. 
So what's the tableau about? This is where the crux of the matter lies, tableau, right? We have the components listed here, H plus and AC minus and this here is the tableau and here we are going to have our species and what are they? They are HAC, AC minus, H plus and OH minus, right? And now from your formation equations, you are going to populate the relevant constants here. So, how many H plus do you require to form HAC? As you see, it is 1, so that is 1. And how many AC minus do you require to form HAC? That is 1, again, so 1. Or let us be done with H plus first. How many H plus do you need to form to form AC minus? None. How many H plus to form 1 H plus? 1. And in this case, minus 1. And so again, same case with the state AC minus 1, 0, and 0. And obviously, the last equation or the aspect that we need to look at is what is the source of all these components, right? What is it now? Keep in mind that the initial uh, question was from we added acetic acid. So, we know that the source, the only source of these components is from the initial acetic acid that you added. So, that is the recipe species. So, that is going to be we added HAC. So, HAC naught. Again, same case here, we need 1 H to form HAC and again 1 AC minus to form HAC. So, now we are done with the tableau and now we are going to move on to the balance equations, right? So, first we obviously are looking at component balance equations. So, it makes sense to be able to write these component balances now. So, how many component balance equations will you have? So, they will be equal to the number of components that you define. So, in this case we define two components they are H plus and AC minus. And so, you are going to have two component balance equations, right? So, let us look at what they are. So, I believe H total, right, is equal to something else and AC total. These are the component balance equations. So, uh, if I am not wrong, they are going to be equal to the concentrations of to be able to assist us further. I am going to again rewrite or rewrite the tableau here. And this is the recipe species, the source of everything. So, this is my component balance now for H total that is equal to 1 times HAC concentration. And what are these, what is this HAC? This is the equilibrium concentration now, right? So, H and AC minus, there is nothing in AC minus plus H plus minus OH minus and state or AC total and that is here. And what is that equal to? that is equal to HAC and AC minus. So, what do we understand from this particular component balance now, right? If you look at the first equation or H total, we see that H is only present or can you know transform between HAC, H plus and OH minus, right? It can you know transform within these three species and the estate can transform between HAC and AC minus, but the total estate is always going to be the constant or be a constant. And again, as we discussed earlier, what is the source of these components now? Keep in mind that we added a state initially, right, a state acid and that is what we have here HAC naught and that is the source and here we have 1. So, it is 1 times HAC naught and this is your known value obviously and here too it is going to be equal to 1 times HAC naught. So, here now how many equations do we have? We have two equations, but how many unknowns do we have? We have four unknowns HAC, AC minus, H plus and OH minus and what are these? These are the concentrations at equilibrium. So, we are still missing two further equations. Anyway, let us label this please. This is the component balance equations, right? This is what we have. So, we are done with that. And the next aspect is going to be the equilibrium equations. Again, uh, we are trying to solve for a system that is at equilibrium. So, obviously, you are going to have equilibrium equations to assist you in your solution, right? So, let us look at what they are. And we know that we have two 
particular dissociations here with respect to acid and base they are HAC going to H plus and AC minus and H2O dissociating into what is it H plus and OH minus and we have the relevant acid dissociation constants Ka1 that is equal to concentration of H plus and the concentration of AC minus by concentration of what now HAC and here we have acid dissociation constant for water and that is going to be concentration of H plus into concentration of OH minus and obviously activity of water uh, is going to be equal to 1 thus we do not list it here. So, here now we have two other independent equations and so in total we have 1, 2, 3 and 4 equations right. So, we have 4 equations or independent equations and 4 variables and thus we can solve for your solution now. But before we go further I guess the point of this class is not for you to only be able to crunch up the numbers and you know blow someone's mind now right. So, you also want to be able to develop the intuition with respect to what it is you would expect in nature or what you would expect to see as in you know that what we are plugging in here you are adding 10 power minus 3 or you want to estimate the concentration of 10 power minus 3 molar uh, acetic acid right. You can always plug this in or now we are also going to start looking at the visual mintech software that I requested that people install right the visual mintech software we are going to look at that too. But you should also be able to guess your particular value the pH at least right. So, we are going to do that let us see how we can solve this particular uh, aspect I guess right. So, what is that here and here we are going to first solve for H plus that makes everything easier. So, we have HAC naught right and that we know is equal to 10 power minus 3 molar. So, I am going to use that that is going to be equal to HAC plus H plus minus OH minus right. And so, obviously now what else can I list this as though. So, here we have 4 independent equations, but if you remember we already solved for ionization fractions right. Ionization fractions what do they give you an idea about? They give you an idea about well, let us say the fraction of your particular protonated or deprotonated form in relation to or with respect to the total acid. So, here let us try to use them. So, what do we have here? We have 10 power minus 3 is equal to alpha naught into the total what is that I guess uh, that will be a state total in this case we will see why plus H plus a state total not the concentration obviously minus Kw by H plus. So, let us see where we got this particular term from. So, this is from here. So, OH minus concentration is equal to Kw by H plus and let us see how we end up with it here. We know that alpha naught is equal to concentration of HAC by concentration of HAC plus concentration of AC minus and what is that equal to concentration of HAC by and look at this term sounds or seems familiar and that is nothing but equation number 2, equation number 2 here and so that is a state total right and again you know that a state total equal to HAC naught. So, that is going to be equal to HAC by 10 power minus 3 right again HAC is equal to alpha naught into a state total or uh, that is equal to alpha naught here into a state total is 10 power minus 3. So, we can plug that in here 10 power minus 3 is equal to alpha naught into 10 power minus 3 which is a state total plus H plus minus Kw by H plus. And so, I guess here now you are going to have a quadratic equation and you can end up solving for this particular equation right. So, once you can have H plus let us move on once you have or you solve for H plus from that particular equation you can immediately solve for OH minus right and once you have that we know that estate total estate total or you can solve for the relevant 2 equations from Ka1 let us say right and equation 2 and equation 3. So, before we go further <coughs> We are also going to look at visual mint, uh, mint take briefly today right let us see what it is about. But before we go further let us see if we can estimate let us say the pH I guess let me dig up the solution 
but in the meantime let us see if we can also estimate the pH of the solution or concentration of H plus. So, this is to develop our intuition let us see how good or bad we are. So, we know that we are the concentration of the acid is 10 power minus 3 molar the total anyway the total is 10 power 3 minus, minus 3 molar and the other crucial piece of information is 4.7 is the pKa or the relevant pKa the, or the acid dissociation constant right. So, we have these two aspects yes. So, let us see you know what we can estimate here. So, one case is that I estimate that all the acid that I put in is going to dissociate or as in HAC is going to completely dissociate into H plus and AC minus right, but that is not going to the case. So, let us see what the pK pH will be at that particular case. So, the pH will be so if you have complete dissociation H plus is let us say 10 power minus 3 approximately equal to 10 power minus 3 and then the pH will be equal to minus log activity or concentration of H plus in this case. So, equal to the pH will end up being 3 right. So, think of this though do you think by adding acetic acid which has a pK around 4.7 do you think the pH can be brought down to 3 not really and why is that as you know you looked at the speciation diagram and what do you see 4.7 and you need a humongous amount of acid to be able to bring that down to 3 why is that pH 3 and why is that because most of it stays as HAC and it does not dissociate into H plus and AC minus. But our assumption when getting at pH 3 value what was that I guess we were assuming that all the acid or all the acetic acid dissociated into H plus and AC minus and then we calculate the pH accordingly right. But that is not the case here though why is that because pK is 4.7. So, certainly the pKa will not be <coughs> or pH will not be as low. So, at best it is going to be near your pKa, but because we added considerable quantities which is 10 power minus 3 or considerable concentration pKa. So, let us go ahead and assume that the pH is going to be relatively near pH 4 right it is going to be below 4.7 right somewhere over here, but it is not going to be as far off as pH 3. So, this is particularly you know one solution I guess right. So, let us see how we can use visual mintech which is a tool or a software that will help you predict the concentrations of most scenarios especially with respect to acid and base complexes and precipitation and dissolution at equilibrium right. So, I believe we uh, you were uh, requested to uh, uh, source this software again I repeat it is visual mintech or v mintech that is available for free to download I think 10 or 20 MB and uh, I guess let us look at that particular interface now ok. So, here I guess so I am not sure if you uh, downloaded different versions, but this is the version that I have here right. So, I believe uh, what do we have here let us look at this software for now. So, I have file you can open input file and such if you want to and parameters where I can specify some of the parameters such as alternity which we will discuss later PE and EH they are relevant to your redox reactions which we are not going to go into greater detail now, but at the fag end of the class. And if you are talking about precipitation and dissolution for example, you know a solid precipitating you know you have dissolved compounds once the threshold is increased let us say right you are going to have precipitation or the inverse let us say if it is now dilute let us say you are going to have the solid dissol dissolving into uh, the aqueous form right. So, that is what you are going to have here. And so, this particular phase relevant to that. So, you can always have surface complexation or adsorption scam models SEM we are going to discuss that uh, later on at the end of the class. So, that is uh, surface complexation reactions I believe and gases your particular system can be in equilibrium with gases right phase equilibrium. So, that is what we discussed earlier. So, this particular aspect is with respect to phase equilibrium again redox as in you are going to specify your redox couple. So, you will have the oxidized form and the reduced form and you can specify here what your couples are going to be. Similar to your conjugate acid and base you are going to call the relevant uh, what do we say oxidized and reduced forms the couple. So, that is what we have here again we will discuss those at the fag end of the class. So, multi sweep problem let us say and where what is happening here please cancel and back oh, anyway multi sweep problem. So, here if you want to look at sweep or titration let us say you know let us say you want to uh, see how a system changes with pH let us say right or some such variables now. So, let us select that here let us say yes. So, you can see 
right uh, or you can define the system in such a way that you have a particular solution and I add the titrant or you know change the pH how is my system going to change. So, that is what you can see here with respect to your titration and sweep 2 I guess uh, uh, with greater functionality you can vary either pH, EH, PE or so on or any other concentration. So, with the change in so think of this now let us say you have your waste water and let us say as you change a particular concentration of your compound a recompound let us say ligand you want to see how the system changes. So, you can use the sweep here. So, anyway we will discuss this in greater detail later on. So, for now I am going to move back and we are going to try to approximate the value of our uh, particular solution or simple uh, what do we say uh, solution that we just looked at. So, first I am going to look at various aspects. So, here is one aspect and it is pH <coughs> is it fixed or calculated from mass balance. So, right now we do not know the pH do we? So, I am not obviously going to fix it. So, I am going to say <coughs> calculated from mass balance right and ionic strength it can be fixed at a particular value or you can say it is going to be calculated. So, I am going to leave it at calculated, but for our, our system ionic strength is not going to play a huge role because it is a dilute system anyway right. So, let us look at what else. So, here we have look at the various units they are molal, millimolal, micromolal, milligram per liter, microgram per liter, log molal and so on. Again as we discussed earlier with respect to activities right the concentration units are molal units and that is what you see here they are molal units, but obviously you can use molar units, but the error is going to be around 3 percent because the density of water is not exactly 1 kg per liter I guess right. So, the temperature is its standard temperature which is 25 degrees centigrade. So, let us move on I guess. So, pH calculated from mass balance <coughs> and strength is to be calculated and now I need to choose my components. So, add components. So, for this I need to be able to look at the tableau. So, let me look at my tableau where is my tableau here right and here is my tableau in a shabby manner. So, let us me have that in the next slide I guess. So, I have my tableau H plus AC minus right and we had the relevant tableau here. So, my two components were going to be H plus let me choose H plus I drag down and I go to H plus and the concentration of H plus or the total concentration H total what is that equal to I guess. So, we know that H total as we looked at H total is equal to H AC naught right and that was equal to 10 power minus 3 molar right. So, 0 0.001 molar right same case with a state total a state total or AC total is equal to H AC naught that is again equal to 10 power minus 3 molar and that is equal to 0 0.001 molar I guess right. And let us see let us plug this in. So, obviously to be able to use your v tech you should at least be able to calculate your total component concentrations as in at least be able to identify the components and then be able to give the tableau or form the tableau yourself and then come up with the relevant component balance right. So, let us look at what we have here. So, we are trying to edit that list right we will add the uh, so this is going to be key 0 0.001 and I am going to add that to the list we are going to check that later. And so, because acetic acid <coughs> or a state is a organic compound I need to choose that show organic compounds and then A C minus is the shortcut or a state ok here is a state here and again same concentration right uh, a state total is also again 0 0.001 molar and I am going to add that to the list and as a check I am going to go and view edit list and here I see H total is 0 0.001 molar and state total is again 0 0.001 molar molar and I am done with that for now. I will go back to the main menu right and let us see where we are now and now I will run Vimintech right and let us look at what we have. So, let us look at this now the pH is 3.9. So, the first aspect to look at is that we approximated the pH earlier right and that we said was going to be around 4 right. So, let us check our value with what we have here and you see that the pH that they calculated <coughs> not they pardon me the model calculates is 3.9. So, we were relatively or you know remarkably closer or you know we were able to predict remarkably or uh, we did a good job in predicting the pH value right. So, you should try to develop that particular 
uh, intuition as you go along. And ionic strength as you see here, you know it is relatively low, yes that is something that you would expect. And here now in this particular section, you see the concentrations of various species. So, what were the 4 species that we listed in our particular uh, solution? They were estate ion and estic acid, H plus and OH minus and that is what you see here. And obviously, the system also gives you the activity and because the ionic strength is low, you more or less see that the concentration and activity of the relevant compounds are more or less the same. But if the ionic strength is high, the activity is going to then be low, right. So, this is something that you need to understand. So, let me also look at view species distribution. So, this is the tab here, view species distribution, what does that give me an idea? So, I want to look at in which form is a state going to be in. So, it tells me that only 12 percent of the total estate is going to be as AC minus <coughs> and 87 percent of uh, the estate is going to be in the form of HAC, right. So, this is what we understand too, right and uh, let us look at what we have there I guess. Back to main output menu and if I switch. So, what do we see here? This is our system HAC and this is AC minus, AC minus uh, pKa is 4.7, right and what was our current pH value? I think something around 3.9, so 3.9. So, what do you see here? You see that most of it is present as HAC and little or some of it, only some of it is present as AC minus. So, let us check our values here and display saturation indices. So, that is why it shows only 12 percent is present as the deprotonated form or a state and 87 percent is present as the acid, right. So, that is what we would expect and that is what we just observed too, right. Come back to here and you can look at equilibrated mass distribution, but not of great use in acid based systems because everything is going to be in the dissolved form, right. So, take home message here is that you can get the concentration, you can get the pH, right. And you can also get the species distribution, not species I guess, speciation and also the relevant concentrations of all your species. So, uh, today we were able to solve <coughs> a simple example with respect to uh, adding an acid, a known quantity of acid to uh, water and then calculate what is the pH and the equilibrium concentration of all the various species there, right. And then we also looked at how to use visual mintech and we are going to use visual mean tech throughout the class, right, because that is going to help you, right. You want to conduct an experiment, yes sure, if you have a lot of time resources and uh, you have and I am sure you do not have a lot of time to spare. So, obviously, visual mean tech is going to help you cut down on the calculations and your laboratory time, right. So, in the next class again, we are going to go through our next lecture session again, we are going to go through with our uh, or more complex or slightly more complex examples and for uh, this session, I am done. Thank you.